Good morning to all my friends and family and Christos Anesti. Happy Pascha to all the Greek Orthodox Christians who celebrated Easter yesterday and hopefully you could catch up with your families and friends and enjoy um, a nice little get together. It's Monday morning, it's 5.30. I'm back here on George Street at the light rail and uh, about to head down to Circular Quay. Bit of a breeze today. Uh, clear skies above, I can see the moon directly above me. The light rail is on its way here. Um, I guess the only people on the street here are just the, the homeless. The homeless of Sydney. Uh, we've got the young lady across the road there with her uh, cats. Um, every day seems to be the same old story. Uh, as I said before, I don't know what's happening over there, but it is sad to see young people and people sleeping rough around Sydney. Um, just so you know, I spoke to a uh, homeless person on Saturday. His name is John and he lives down at uh, Circular Quay. And I asked him a few questions, but uh, he had, a, I guess, a few mental, mental issues. But I did ask him, do you want a jacket? Because he was looking at my jacket that I was wearing. And he said, yeah, yeah, bring one in. So I've got a jacket here in my plastic bag. And I told him, should I just leave it down there at Circular Quay? But he said, no, no, you t keep it with you. And when, I, when we see each other, give it to me then. So I guess in some ways he's got his wits about him, but in other ways he's uh, a little loopy, um, which I guess sums it up. You know, there are some people who, who have some deep, deep scarring and deep issues that uh, I guess force them to uh, separate from society and not want to, uh, to be too close to anybody or anything Anyway, light rail's here, so I'll, I'll pop on board and uh, kick off this book summary for today. And today's book summary is entitled Hooked. Hooked. Today's book summary is Hooked, and it's by an author named Earl uh, Nur. Nur Ale. Nur Ale. So Nur kicks off his book summary with a bold sort of quote saying, why not live now instead of someday? And you know, if that's not a great call the to action, then nothing thing. very much is. So why not live now instead of someday? Um, so what is this book all about? This is a really interesting book. I really enjoyed reading this book, Summary. And it says, or well, this book is all about the psychology of technology so what gets us hooked on certain products and why the designers of those products understand that uh, how the brain works and how habits are formed and are able to create a reward system to generate a dopamine hit a pleasure hormone hit for us so that we uh, we do get um, I guess hooked, hooked on these products. So something that I wasn't aware of, but uh, this author highlighted is that the most successful products in the world make us form habits around them. Did you know, did you know that the iPhone is the most profitable product in the history of the planet? There's never been a more profitable product in the history of the world than the iPhone. And the other thing that I learned was that one out of seven people in the world are on Facebook. This stop is circular key. Which is this phenomenal. Terminates at circular but key. the author then a reminds us and, and highlights and that the reason for their successes, trains, the reason why these line, products succeed is that they enable us and force us to develop strong habits around them. They aren't just tools, but an integral part of our daily lives. We simply, simply can't live without them. 
And I can attest to that. Um, you know, my iPhone and I are inseparable. You know, the other week, I left home. I forgot my glasses, but I had my iPhone on me, and I just tried as hard as I could throughout the day to uh, to read my Facebook posts, to uh, to look at the time, um, to uh, look at my email, and to try and do some banking and all of those things because every single thing that I need to, in order to get through my day, in order to get through my work, is, uh, is on the phone. So um, it's got to the point where instead of having multiple tools and multiple things, you just have the one device now and it enables you to do plenty of things. Anyway, I'm down here by the harbour, and this is where John normally lives, around here somewhere. I can't see him at the moment. But I've got his, uh, I've got his jacket to help keep him warm through the, uh, these cooler months. It is starting to cool up and get a little bit cooler. Um, but what I can smell in the air is I can smell smoke. So uh, there must be some back burning going to be happening over the next couple of days. And I must have done some over the weekend to try and reduce the fuel loads that have been building up over the past month or two with all the big rains that we've been having. Anyway, what else can we learn from this wonderful book, from this awesome author? So, uh, just get under the light here so I can get a bit, of, a bit better vision. So the winds today look like they're a, uh, a westerly but more of a southwesterly. And I think you can probably see that smoke haze <coughs> above the Harbour Bridge. <coughs> so uh, the other great thing about these products, the iPhone and Facebook and all of these other things is that because they're so integral into our lives and they're so important for us, you know, we become extremely loyal and uh, long-term customers because of the habit that they've, we've created around them. And the bottom line is that in order to, if, to go to another competitor's product, the other product would need to be significantly, significantly better than the product that we currently have in order for us to change. I'll just pop the bag there on the, uh, the pole with a jacket in it and I'll come back and pick it up later so I can just free up my hands and, and be a little uh, easier. And uh, whenever you've got a product that creates habit <coughs> and people are, are hooked on it, the other great thing is that there are, they are less sensitive to dollars, to price. And in fact, are happy, extremely happy to pay a premium price, which is exactly what you want with your product. Because by paying premium prices, you can extract premium profits. So how do these products get us hooked? How can they have such an impact on us? is the big question that uh, the author then goes on to answer. And he said that these products not only create and give us an opportunity, but what they, uh, what they do is they provide us with variable rewards. Uh, and these variable rewards are the key, the key component of ha habit forming products. Hang on, mate. Uh, my dad works the same one. Does he? Yeah, I probably shouldn't tell you that. Eh? Okay, uh, good on you, mate. Hey, you say boss or? No, no, I'm just, I'm just a union delegate, so I'm just nice. doing a vlog. Just doing a vlog at the moment. Yeah, he used to. Oh, yeah. He used to work for Sam FEG too. Did he? Yeah. What's his name? Paul Connell. Okay, I'll keep an eye out for him. I've got a meeting tomorrow, so I'll go down and check it out. Yeah. Are we going to be on your vlog? Yeah, yeah, you're on my vlog. Just do a bit of. Uh... Yeah. How do we hey, boys. Vlog? Hey. How do we watch your vlog? Ah, uh, look, I do. Uh, I do a vlog every day. It's uh, it's called Jim's Five AM Club. Oh yeah, yeah. that's nice. <laughs>
Thank you. So I'll just continue because otherwise I'm going to run out of time. I'm no, going to go back to work. Right. Have a good, have a good day. YouTube, yeah. What do I, what do I search again? Um, my name is James Paniaris, but it's Jim's 5am club. So oh, if you yeah. do Jim's 5am 5, 5 club, it'll come up. It'll probably right, come up. Sweet, thank you. I'm, I'm almost at a thousand logs. Cheers, boys. So, um, it was nice catching up with the boys there early in the morning. Um, so, key rewards. So, what's the key here? So, we're talking about the variability of rewards. So, uh, the important thing, this is the, the, the crux of the matter. And if you're going to learn something about this book and from this book, it's that the rewards need to be variable. They need to change over time in order for them to remain effective because you need to incorporate change and surprise. It's called the jackpot effect. And I learned this many, many years ago um, from a book that I read on uh, the dolphin trainers. Because in order to, to, to train a dolphin, in order to keep a dolphin keen, you need to keep on changing the rewards and every now and then throw a jackpot just to keep them honest, to keep them keen. And it's the same with people. Because what happens is that when you get rewarded for something, you, uh, <coughs> your brain, your brain uh, um, secretes dopamine. Dopamine, which is a, uh, which is a hormone. And it's, a, um, it's a pleasure, a pleasure hit that you get. Um, um, and I guess it's the same as being, um, I guess, um, hooked on drugs, because that's what, it, what that's what happens when you uh, when you get rewarded uh, over and over, and it, that, those rewards are, are translated into chemical reactions. So the way it works, um, once again, and we all need to understand this. If you are going to want to be uh, popular amongst your friends, amongst your family, if you want your, your wife, your partner to, uh, to never get sick of you, then you, keep on, you need to keep on changing in a nice way and um, offer surprises, uh, welcomed, welcomed surprises, not, <laughs> not unwelcome surprises to your partner, because that in itself, that variety, that variability, is something which is really really special and it uh, and it's like this this effect that they use here on these uh, on these products this variability reward effect and an example of it is Facebook your newsfeed on Facebook because you keep on scrolling keep on scrolling and sooner or later you're going to come across something which is going to create excitement and reward you um, and give you that dopamine hit um, this surprise effect makes you anticipate things, ex anticipate the future with excitement. Um, and these different re rewards, these different variable rewards, which are not predictable, are the ones which, uh, which, you know, which get us hooked. It's like the, you know, the, uh, the pokies. Now you just keep on pumping the money in there, you just never know which coin is going to, or which, which, which yeah, coin, I'm talking coin, coin I'm talking, um, which takes us back you know, 20, 30 years. You don't, they don't put coins in poker machines anymore. But you don't, you don't know which roll is going to be the one that's going to hit the jackpot. So, uh, so that's the key. The key is to have rewards, to offer rewards. And that's why it's important to be generous as a person. Um, and not too predictable, so that people um, um, get a bit of excitement out of uh, their engagement with you, um, where you can uh, um, um, you know, overstimulate them, overhug them, overkiss them, um, buy them drinks, do things that are going to uh, surprise them in a positive way. So the last couple of points from this book where the authors talk about is uh, what, what are the sort of questions that you need to ask yourself uh, about the products that you're developing and that you're involved with? And you've got to ask yourself, um, does this product improve someone's life? And would I use the product? 
And this is where they talk about the iPhone and for many of us, and I can, I can vouch for this, um, the iPhone in the right hands is a, is a tool of education, it's a, a tool of expression, it's a tool that enables you to connect, collaborate, and to do many, many things that you couldn't possibly do. Um, you know, in our hands now, we've got more processing power than what the world had in 1940. Now, you've got more processing power than many of these scientists had when they sent the space uh, rockets to the moon in the uh, 60s. So, you know, use this tool. Don't, don't be shy. Don't be, uh, um, um, you know, don't be um, <laughs> uncreative because this tool can, can help you become creative. But they said that there are some things in our lives which are habit forming but don't improve our lives. You know, things like gambling, poker machines, uh, and porn, for example. Pornography, the author talked about here, is extremely, extremely habit forming and actually changes the structure of the brain. And the more you, you watch of it, according to the author, uh, the more aggressive and the more um, abusive uh, forms of uh, pornography you want to engage in. And it also changes the, the sexual tastes of the people who, who watch it. And it can lead to, I guess, serious problems. But uh, the iPhone, on the other hand, is a, a tool that can make us productive, but you need to manage it. You know, you need to manage it so you don't you spend far too much time on it. But but you know, leverage it. I guess is the, the bottom line. So I think I'll leave it there. So thank you very much for joining me on uh, this first vlog of the uh, the work week. I need to lift my game uh, and get you know through four or five a day now in order to reach my target because uh, over the uh, Easter weekend I didn't do as many as what I had planned but we'll get there. So this book summary entitled Hooked by Nur Isle is something which uh, is, is, is a pretty interesting read. So let's finish off with a positive affirmation. Right, G'day. Yeah. Happy day there. I'm alive. I'm well. I feel absolutely great to my friends and family, stay connected, stay relevant, stay reasonable. Um, let's uh, make the most of this magical Monday, the first day of the week. Let's be the wind beneath our wings, the wave beneath our board, the, uh, the zephyr that bellows our sails and the propeller that uh, churns the water and, and moves our craft in a direction that we want to lead, live, lead and take some advice from this author. Why not live now instead of someday? You can, you're invited to live now. Make the most of now, because all we have is now. Now this day, today, is never gonna come back again. And uh, I was just reflecting yesterday on the fact that uh, it's been, you know, almost uh, over, uh, almost 40 years since uh, I was at a party and my uncle Angelo made a, uh, a, a cocktail and it was entertaining everybody and everybody just absolutely loved it and it was called a grasshopper so yesterday in his memory because he was the last person in our family to pass away I decided to uh, go to the uh, bottle shop get a couple of uh, liqueurs and some cream and I was making cocktails for everybody and it was just a fun time and once again reliving those magical memories of all those years ago when my uncle was, uh, was at his best, at his high when he was a man about town and uh, brought tears to my eyes and brought tears to my Auntie Anna's eyes. But uh, we made the most of yesterday and uh, we'll have to just keep on making the most of every single day. Yasas, Sasagapau, Pilakya from Jim's 5am club and I'll come to you again shortly uh, at about nine o'clock. Cheers. Bye for now.